Thank you so much for staying tuned to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. We have been demystifying marriage before we took our very short break. And the question I have asked you on social media is, do you consider getting married? Is it something that you see in your future? I want to hear from you. Tell me your experiences. Tell me your opinions about this as we continue with this conversation. Do you consider marriage? Is it something in your future? I'm joined by two experts who have been in marriage and they advocate advocate for it as well i'm here with esther and dennis and you've just been telling me your experiences and one thing i've taken away is your your marriages have been rooted in christ they have been rooted in the understanding of what true union is because in the bible that's where it really outlines yeah. what marriage is from in genesis the very first book it really outlines it and the bible says a man shall leave his his father and mother and at a peer the wife and they'll come together and that's exactly what marriage is but in the society that we have today we have so many misconceptions and we have so many ideas of our own of what we think marriage should be or what we think it shouldn't be one of the things that we have been battling with is the aspect of men being the providers we are in a feminist era where people are woke women are earning maybe as much as men even more sometimes than men in some contexts so there's a level of empowerment within the the female uh, gender but the men have also not been empowered as much since i think the girl child movement started in the early 2000s so the men have been neglected a bit and men also feeling like why should i be the sole provider if a woman is making as much as me or even more. And that's one thing that people think about, especially the men. Men do not want 100% uh, responsibilities. They don't want to give 100%. And that's one thing that's been keeping our young men away from marriage. Dennis, yes. what do you think about this conversation? Because most times people want to talk about either 50-50, what do you bring to the table? What bills are you going to handle? In friendships, at our Zengekwa relationship, <laughs> these are conversations people argue about on social media with strangers. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, I came across something that blew my mind. And um, uh, it was um, an article by the late uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. He said uh, on the verse we just quoted, a man shall uh, leave his uh, father and mother and uh, the same. But uh, he said uh, his uh, concept was the man will leave his mother and father. And as you was in a wedding, let's say in a normal wedding uh, ceremony, the father of the bride walks the bride down the, uh, the aisle and hands it over to the, the now husband-to-be. So he said, what, what, what does that mean? It means that the woman, is, uh, her father is handing over her daughter to you and now you, as the man or the bride to be, become the new father to the woman, and that blew my mind. Yeah. So part of the responsibility of a man in uh, in marriage is to also father his wife. So you provide a father provides everything. So you provide everything for your wife, no matter if she's earning or she's not. You are there to provide, and that 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 I think changed a lot of my my view on. Uh, what as a husband is, mm. you also have to father your, your wife. Mm. Yeah. And that's very fascinating because it's a tradition that has been done from Kitambo. Whether it's traditional weddings, white weddings, every other wedding, the father hands over the bride yeah. to the husband. And what you've said is fascinating because that means they're being handed over to this man to take over the responsibility of yeah. catering to the needs of this woman. Yeah. And that's one thing that men avoid these days. Or just the idea of it. People think, if you, if you want me to provide 100%, you are needy, you are not self-sufficient. And it, it makes women also afraid of marriage. Because the way we're talking about it over break, yeah. there is something that I like to say. There is this, this, this apocalypse of a certain man that is going on. Yeah. So the current men who are available, most of them are of the, of the idea that they don't want to be the sole providers. Mm. They want 50-50 split responsibilities. Yeah. And the truth is, even in a marriage, of course, there are things that you will balance out. Yeah. And 
we tend to focus on the finances, but we don't think about every other aspect that is being provided in the relationship. So Esther, when you were thinking about marriage, or when you, maybe right now, because you've been 10 years into marriage, and the things that you've learned through your journey, so what are some of the advices that, that you'd say? Because the things that men will provide, the things that women will provide, and that's why we, we tend to complement each other. It's not 100%, this one does this, this one does that. So what do you think about the idea that that, that people have these days about 50-50 and splitting all these things before even getting to a committed relationship. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that question. And I, I would say that um, it's unfortunate that uh, currently there's, there's a lot of voices that are speaking unto us. Yeah. A lot of voices, the social media voices, these friends' voices, and, and, and there's also the, the biblical voice. But the biblical voice is being silenced so much that people want to be, people don't want commitment. Commitment currently is being seen as it is burdensome. It's not necessary. We are in a free world. We are free. I'm free to do what I do. But it is in that that we are missing the mark. Because until we come to a, a, a place whereby we have or we can root ourselves onto the principles of life, and in this case of the biblical uh, principles, it is very important that we know that what the Bible says about this. So first of all, even the Bible itself is instructing husbands to, to love their wives as Christ loved the church. So by loving, love, love alone, when you look at the Bible talking about uh, 1 Corinthians 13, about love, yeah. love is kind, patient, and all those. And uh, I love the, the, the last portion which is saying that it does not keep a record of wrongs. Yeah. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. So in that aspect, again, when you are going to love your spouse selflessly, you know, I, I, you, you brought this, this may, you mentioned this uh, verse in the beginning whereby a man leaving the, 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 the parents and then they come, they join together. You know, by that, forming the fundamental institution of marriage, already God had already made marriage even more important than even a parent-child relationship. Because it is only in that aspect that God has meant you leave your father and mother. So then God, uh, this is yeah. my father. This is my child. You are telling my child to leave? You know, but yeah, because time has come. This child now has marriage institution in the God's agenda was so high. And yeah. in the aspect, if man is going to remain the head of the home, then it comes with that provision. A father figure, a father figure is a source. A father is a source, a provider and everything. I understand the society has empowered women more than the men, which is now again another problem that we are having. But when you're going to look at the case of 50-50. It is still well, but who is guiding us? Who is informing our decisions in this union? Yeah. Is it the social media or the Bible? If it is the Bible, let the man remain the head. I understand life happens. We can get into this marriage and the man loses his job. There is no problem. I will stand in having known that when the man was capable, he stood in. He yeah. provided. He, until he became incapacitated to the extent that he can't provide. But now that I'm, I'm able to provide, I, I'm going to stand in. So I think it is, it is important that the man himself look at him, himself. Yeah. Or they look at themselves as the head, as the provider. Uh, from that aspect, point in time, the woman will join that. And even all that she has, however little it is, she will bring it on the table. Yeah. So the problem now is even the men away have already shied away. The men themselves are already shied away from the responsibility. Then if yeah. that is the case, then let them just keep off. There's no need of walking into the marriage with that mindset of 50-50. 50-50 will find itself on its own way yeah. down the marriage when things work out. But when you have the vision that I'm the head, you are going to be, if already you're asking what somebody's bringing to the table, when will you sit back and hear from God so that you become the prophet to this family? Yeah. You become the vision bearer of the family. You become, so, so wholesomely let men themselves be rooted in God. When God is leading, then God will guide you into the right direction on what to do. Even if your husband, your wife is earning more than you, yeah. there is going to be a union because you are partnering together and because of the important communication. We talked about uh, conflict resolutions. Communication is important when conflicts arise in such kind of marriages. So that is when you can sit down with your spouse-to-be or your current spouse. Yeah. Or, you know, and you can discuss this thing that if this happened, how can we go about it? Or I see this part, this thing is not going on well. When I used to have enough money, I used to provide. Currently yeah. I can't, I'm struggling, can we do this? And then you understand that even disagreements are normal. 
So when you have conflict resolution skills, then you can see how you work this out and journey through until the, your partner becomes or comes back on their feet again and you journey through. So yeah. that is what is lacking outside here. So we have to be rooted in the word of God. Otherwise, if you're going to be rooted in the social media and everything, we are missing the mark. The marriage institution will keep uh, crumbling off as it is happening. That's so true. may God help us. Thank you. <laughs> may God help us indeed. <laughs> and I think it's true because most of these um, ideologies are rooted in uh, opinions. Opinion. of our friends, True. our peers, social yeah. media. It's not really rooted in even our own morals yeah. and understanding. Yeah. So I think we need to go back to that and yeah. figure out where are we informing yeah. our decisions based on. Yeah. And uh, I want us also to touch on um, the aspect of what you said. Yeah. Love keeps no record of wrong yeah. and right. Yeah. But I want to read some of the comments you guys have shared <laughs> on our social media platforms before we continue with the conversation. And uh, the question we were asking on social media, we, we, it's up uh, still on our platforms at Y254. It's, do you consider getting married? Do you consider marriage as something that you see in your future? So these are comments from Facebook. We have Vincent Bukacha who said, watching you live from Bukacha areas. Uh, thank you. We have Abuta Wata, I believe, who's listening in. Thank you. We have Pose, the DJ Marcos, who says, Akona mansion, question mark. Akona pesa. Akona biashara. Akona gari. Anyway, pia mimi mwenye ako. Naizo zote simjui. Yo, yeah. <laughs> so you need to have this thing so yeah. that you can consider. Mm. Victoria Kariuki says, Ndani kabisa ni kiwa saidi agatundu na mkumbushe watu kuna new upcoming artist Kyle YouTube. Uh, please check that artist out. We want to support local artists. Mm. John takes Nyagaka Mama's son who says, Mimi bora tuishi. Mm. Period. Uh, ju I think Juspa uh, Masika who says, if we are able to know each other as well as supporting and understanding each other, that's, that's good. That's a very good opinion. We have Kale K.E. who says Zendakas, thank you for watching us. Brio K.E. who says, love, uh, love some with proper IQ. True, there are people who want someone to have at least something. <laughs> Brenda uh, Nabalayo has said, Akondakas Pia, thank you so much. Willie Bazu KE says, getting you loud and clear from Kitale in Birunda. And um, we have Twist Ngororo, who's Ndani from United, United States of Moya. Gadigiri present Sana Asanti. Kipto Mutiso is locked in. And um, do we have any more comments? So I, I thank you so much for watching us from all over, first of all. But I'd like to hear more about your opinions on this conversation. Do you consider getting married? Is it something that you see yourself doing in your future? We have two amazing people who have been uh, married for some years, and your experiences are very, very insightful. But one thing that uh, you brought about, the Bible says love holds no record of right and wrong. But there are people who have kuna maisha ambili. There's a story that's been trending currently on X about this minister in Equatorial Guinea who was living a double life and he had a beautiful wife, he has a beautiful wife and a beautiful family, but the wife had no idea about this entire other life. And even in that situation, there's so many other people who are in marriages as well who did not know about what their spouses were doing without their knowledge. So there is a life that we may not know of, of our spouse. So what if some of the things come out and we are not happy about it? Because Dennis, you were saying, regardless of even if the character does not align with yours or some small, small things, you can work through them. So the times that we are all human and mistakes can happen. So what happens if you, if a mistake if imefanyika sasa and you're married, how do you go about resolving that conflict and even forgiving and forgetting so that you don't hold that over your partner's head for the rest of your marriage? Um, uh, the funny thing I would say about marriage is first of all, marriage is a paradox. It has good and it has bad. So depending on the situation, it can be either good or it can be either bad. There's, going, there's always, there's always mm -hmm. going to be a mix of the good and the bad. So it's upon you to now figure out like is if this is what i really wanted is am i am i still pursuing at this point because marriage is not something you you plan for or you hope for for one year or two year or five years yeah. it's it's a lifetime so you're going to always have some hurdles you're going to have to jump over and you, there's there's some things you are going to have to forgive there's uh, there's uh, there's some compromise you have to make along the way 
the, the, there, are, there are a lot of things you have to do. So in the case of uh, like, let's say the, that guy, I believe um, uh, from his uh, perspective, maybe he was doing the right thing. But you see now from when we look at the, what he was doing, yeah. clearly he was doing the wrong thing. So um, it's good to also involve your spouse in whatever you're doing so that you get to hear what they think about. Like I have this idea, um, uh, what do you think? You run things by the person you're with. Yeah. Because ultimately, before the, the, your decisions affect ev anybody else, they affect them first. And then they, now they boil over to the kids and everything to the extended family. But your decisions, first of all, will affect your spouse first. So it's good to always, when you're to, you want to do something, you run, you run it by your spouse. What do you think about this? I want to do this. I want to do that. What do you think about this? So that creates uh, an environment where everybody can run their ideas, can put their ideas on the table, no matter how crazy they are. You know, I feel like doing, going on holiday. Yet your, 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 you know, your, your rent is due or something. You have bills yeah. that are piling. But your partner feels like they need a holiday. You're not supposed to be. Vacation. Yes, <laughs> you're not supposed to be afraid to put those issues on the, pit, on the table because they look ridiculous. That yeah. is one thing about marriage, um, which, when correctly uh, handled, it can make marriage a very happy place. Mm -hmm. But um, all the same, uh, marriage is a paradox. You find that um, yeah. the people who like keeping to themselves and keeping secrets. And um, when you sweep things under the carpet for some time, it becomes a heap and uh, you can notice there's something under this carpet. So when now the, your spouse comes to investigate what has been happening and everything now is everywhere, there's, a, there's chaos. Mm -hmm. And uh, with chaos, there's opportunity for bad things to happen. That's why you find uh, marriages are breaking mm -hmm. because now the, the, the amount of uh, baggage that has had been heeded in st is too much for the other person to bear. Yeah. They need time it's and a partnership. Yes. you have to be in constant communication yes. and agreement. Yes. Because this is someone who you've chosen to be your lifelong partner. True. And one thing that I've also I wanted to bring about based on what you're saying, because yeah. marriage is unique for each and every person, for True. each and every couple. Mm -hmm. Esther, you just mentioned that your husband is currently away mm -hmm. for business. Mm -hmm. And people don't really usually think long distance usually works. Mm -hmm. They we people have the own interpretation and their own maybe ideologies sometimes we have misconceptions about long distance situations but fortunately we're in an era where there's technology and you can communicate but how how does that work in a way that you're still a united front you still maintain your partnership even regardless of the distance and even, sorry, yeah. uh, to add to that, mm -hmm. how do you also maybe compromise? Because mm -hmm. what Dennis is saying, mm -hmm. you have to communicate. Mm -hmm. Kuna opportunities in your ambiam to wako, achana naikwa sabu, kombali sana nta kumis. How do you compromise so yeah. that it benefits every single person in yeah. the relationship? Thank you so much for the question. And I want to answer it in connection with the question you, you ask about uh, how do you handle the aspect of love keeping no record of wrongs? Yeah. You know, and I want to bring the, I want to start by the aspect that current, the, in the current society, we're demystifying marriage mm -hmm. to mean that there is how marriage was in the past. In the traditional African society or in the traditional world, there's how marriage was. Most of the people stayed together and there was not this aspect of the current uh, that we're experiencing. People are working and people are doing everything. And so you have to go out to work. The living conditions have gone high. And so we have to work to ensure we sustain the same marriage and the same needs of the same people that we have, even the children that have now come on board. And the other, I within a short time, just 2019, we also had COVID, COVID stuck in, in. And so COVID also came in a way that it also disrupted the marriage aspect in the, uh, in the aspect of uh, roles. You know, you find that now people are told, some are told to work from home. So you find your spouse is made to work from home. You, you are still working or going to work, or maybe later on when you start reporting to work, your spouse is still working from home. And this spouse could be the husband. So you realize that some, in one or the other, you will, it may be found in the course of time to run errands that you, you as the housewife could have been doing, or yeah. somebody in the house. So these are things that come up because 
the roles are changing and the society is changing and we need to adapt. The Bible says that do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Yeah. So that it means that we are not going to stop marriage because it started in the way traditionally and now currently marriages cannot work. As much as yes, we are seeing marriages are breaking, there are marriages that, that, are, that are still standing based on the word of God. So we, we need now to adjust with the current changing trends of, the, of our society. We have to go work. You know, my husband gets an opportunity to go work out of the country. And so what happens? Do we tell him that stop? When you, he was within, he has no source of income. You're struggling to meet your needs. So that is when now you have the communication, the aspect of communications come in. If yeah. I am not an understanding wife, I would be like, no, you can't go. No, you're leaving us alone. No. But when there is understanding, you're like, you know what? There's uh, something that is going to come in with this. And yeah. so there is the importance of um, understanding. Now, trust. Trust now has to come in between all this. When you relate to the guy who has met the other, uh, the official minister or, or who has just done what he has done, the one that is now circulating in the social media. I believe that there is, it is important to have the support groups. As a marriage, base your marriage or root your marriage in a support group system. And which are these support group system? We have the church. We have friends. We have family. We have mentors. Yes, he might go out there, he doesn't have a mentor or anything, but we keep in touch or we keep ourselves accountable through social media. The social media can still be used both positively and negatively. We communicate, we ensure that this, now we can even do video calls and we ensure that the kids are also in communication and are seeing what is going on. Yeah. So all in all, I believe that let us, uh, let us base ourselves on trust and let us also have that social group or support group system whereby, because as he has said, sometimes marriages will come to a point, there are moments when we celebrate, but there are moments when there are hurdles, struggles come along the way, but it's only in the institutional marriage because it's a, a, it's a commitment, it's a covenant. Yeah. A covenant is something that is long term. A covenant is not something that is just going to be shaken because you've lost a job, you're walking out. No. That's why I say that you need to be ready before you walk in. And when you walk in, it is meant to last. In the aspect of God, it is meant to last. So lean on God. When challenges come, like now you realize your spouse has been doing all this, it only can confirm that we didn't have a support group system. Because when I see your husband, his ways, somehow I can question, hey, the husband is so and so, or even the pastor, he can be brought back and someone to be, um, at least question on one to, or to, to retrieve back his ways. Yeah. So that one only happens when because of the crumbleness the same bible we want to discredit is the same bible that is going to keep us to help us keep this same institution that we desire so much yet we fear it yeah. is rooting ourselves in god that will help us journey through with it so even the husband can stay out of the country but trust can keep us together yeah. trust can make us believe that yo, i know he's away but he's he means good for us so yeah. human beings can fall but how much do i fall in how much do I hold him at heart? Then I can be able to forgive of, from where we have come from. Human beings also make uh, mistakes. So that one now you can retrieve you, yourself as a spouse and look at how can you forgive your spouse if he goes this far. And how safe are you maybe now? Can you test yourselves and all those if all those happen? So I wanted to answer that question in combination with also uh, yeah. what was trending and all that. But yeah, yeah social media is a great true. tool to help us in all this. And that's wonderful because yeah. you have to make the decision of what you want to happen in yeah. your own situations yeah. because it's the two of you who truly yeah. understand what's what's what you're dealing with you. what you're yeah what mm. you're working with yeah. what foundation that mm. you have laid and what you want to build yeah. no one else can really tell you people can advise yeah. they can guide yeah. but you have to make the decisions for yourself True. and again it's all rooted in trust there's mm. so many things it, it's not just love mm. people think you have to be yeah. it's just love and that's <laughs> everything but you have to have trust you mm. have to have you just mm. have to be faithful, faithful as well yeah. you have to be open and you have to be rooted in Christ mm. because yeah. then it's going to inform your yeah. decisions True. and help you honor your partner now as uh, our time is coming to mm. an end unfortunately mm. but I just want us to offer some advice because mm. we have young men and women mm. who out there want to get married mm. or they're thinking about the idea yeah. Maybe they're afraid. Maybe yeah. they have misconceptions about it based mm. on their friends, what they hear on social media. At a year story, I quit a guinea. Yeah. I'm sure it has. Imefanya watu wengi sasa wameogopa ata marriage. But now, what can we advise mm. our our brothers and sisters? Mm. Also, maybe let's start with Dennis. Let's tie that with. Mm. Do you think it's possible for someone who's a Christian and a non-Christian to be in union and mm. make it a successful union? Okay, okay. Um. um there's a common misconception about uh, happiness and marriage. Um, happiness is not about marriage. Uh, marriage is not about happiness. And uh, if you decide in your life you're going to chase happiness, it, is, it will always be elusive. 
because um, uh, for one thing, marriage from where it was created, majority of the times it was to benefit uh, the, the children. Marriage is a safety net for children. The mother being there and the father being there is a safety net for the kids, which is the next generation. I believe in my thinking that was the main purpose of marriage, not for the husband to be happy or, okay, there will be some happiness within uh, the sharing confines of marriage, but it is for the safety net of the kids. It's for the next generation. That is why you are leaving your mother and your father and the other person is leaving them to come together to be one so that you can create, to procreate so that you can create the next generation. Yeah. And about um, uh, the question of asked um, uh, about um, um, a Christian and a Christian and a non-Christian, um, uh, the instruction of the Bible is for the Christian to preach within the confines of the marriage to preach to the non-Christian to spread the gospel. Because how will you spread the gospel to the world if you cannot spread the gospel to your spouse? Yeah. How will you transform the world because the gospel is transformative if you cannot uh, transform the the thinking or the spiritual background of your spouse. That's so true. it's it's a challenge, especially people who are in, uh, one is a Christian, the other is not. It's especially challenging because that is an extra task. Because at, at the long run, you have to convert or you have to convince your spouse that this is the best thing for you and I and this is the best thing for the world. Mm, yeah. Thank you for that. Let me sample the comments and then we can get a parting shot from Esther before we wrap it up. We have uh, Aristan Gumbau who says, yes, I consider supporting a supporting partner, a humble partner, understanding partner, someone who I can who can love with her heart and is God-fearing. And that's the answer to do you consider getting married. Jasper Masika says, if we are able to know each other as well, supporting and understanding each other, uh, I think I read that, but that's also a very good point to reiterate. We have Mark Poldoski who says, to uh, vibe Tunasonga. Anyways, Cheryl, the show is amazing. As always, tuned in from Chuka. Thank you so much, Mark. We have uh, Bryant uh, Daly who says, Someone who has a goal, patience and understanding. The future you don't plan for, you don't see it. Thank you. Mengich uh, K.E. says, uh, Maringo, Marigat Baringo, ako tuned in to call live, Asanti. Then we have Lamek Omarimba who says, Bluetooth, Senior, uh, Koro Marani Bochi, tuned in, Asanti. So I believe that's it for the comments. Esther, just give us a brief parting shot of what you think about this conversation before we wrap it up. Thank you so much. Um, as we conclude, I would want to say that um, marriage is good. Marriage is good and all is said and done, marriage is good. Again, I would want to say is that we will not shy away from marriage. We, 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 won't, we, won't, we, won't, we can't wish it off. We can't wish off marriage because it's a fundamental facet of the society. The society springs from the marriage itself. So marriage is here to stay. So, as a single person or you're looking forward to joining marriage, I would say marriage is a choice. Be ready before you make this choice. And when you make a choice, be ready to abide by the consequences of the choice you have made. Yeah. And so also marriage is not a fairy tale, as my bro had said. It is not happily ever after. There is going to be commitment, sacrifices on your end, sacrifices that will make this institution to succeed. Yeah. And communication is very important for conflict resolutions because they will always arise. Yeah. So if you are ready to step into the marriage, be ready with all, for all this. And by just trust in God to guide you through it all. Do not let God out of this institution. Yes. And then it will be successful. So I would say two are better than, are better than one. You don't want to struggle with your bills and your life when you're old. In old age, you're alone. You're working. At least you want a partner who can hold your hand as you walk along. Thank so I would say you. marriage is good. Let's go for it. Thank you. And let's go for it in the right way. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful parting shot for this yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. That's it. I think we'll, we like to focus on the divorce rates. But we need to focus on the marriage rates. There are a few people who get divorced, but there are many more who stay in successful mm -hmm. marriages. Let us focus on that. You have to decide by yourself, you and your partner. It's very unique to each and every couple. So you have to make up your mind. You have to know who you're getting into marriage with because it's a long 
long-term commitment. Thank you so much. I hope you've gotten something from this conversation. I've learned so much from it personally. We're going to have a repeat of this tomorrow between 1 and 2 p.m. And this episode is also going to air on YouTube in case you want to share it or refer to it in future. That's it for us for today. I'll see you guys next week. Every single Thursday we are live between 7 and 8. My name is Cheryl Blessing and this has been the Power Talk Show.